Mephistopheles, that I my anxious seal may prove, your pangs to soothe and aid your love, a single moment will we not delay, will lead you to her room this very day. Faust and shall I see her, have her? Mephistopheles, no. She to a neighbor's house will go, but in her atmosphere alone, the tedious hours meanwhile you may employ, in blissful dreams of future joy. Faust can we go now? Mephistopheles, tis yet too soon. Faust some present for my love procure. Exit. Mephistopheles present so soon, tis well. Success is sure. Full many a goodly place I know, and treasures buried long ago, I must a bit overlook them now. Exit. Evening. A small and neat room Margaret, braiding and binding up her hair, I would give something now to know, who yonder gentleman could be. He had a gallant air, I trow, and doubtless was of high degree. That written on his brow was seen nor else would he so bold have been. Exit. Mephistopheles come in. Tread softly. Be discreet. Faust, after a pause, begin and leave me, I entreat. Mephistopheles, looking round, not every maiden is so neat, exit. Faust, gazing round, welcome sweet twilight, calm, and blessed, that in this hallowed precinct trains. Fond yearning love, inspire my breast, feeding on hope sweet do thy blissful pains. What stillness here environs me. Content and order brood around. What fullness in this poverty. In this small cell what bliss profound. He throws himself on the leather armchair beside the bed. Receive me thou, who hast in thine embrace. Welcome it in joy and grief the ages flown. How oft the children of a bygone race have clustered round this patriarchal throne. Haply she, also, whom I hold so dear, for Christmas gift, with grateful joy possessed, hath with the full round cheek of childhood, here, her grandsire's withered hand devoutly pressed. Maiden, I feel thy spirit haunt the place, breathing of order and abounding grace. As with a mother's voice it prompted thee, the pure white cover o'er the board to spread, to strew the crisping sand beneath thy tread. Dear hand, so godlike in its ministry, the hut becomes a paradise through thee. And here, he raises the bed curtain. How thrills my pulse with strange delight. Here could I linger hours untold, thou, nature, didst envision bright, the embryo angel here unfold. Here lay the child, her bosom warm with life, while steeped in slumbers due, to perfect grace, her godlike form, with pure and hallowed weavings grew. And thou, ah here what seekest thou? How quails mine in this being now? What wouldst thou here? What makes thy heart so sore? Unhappy Faust. I know thee now no more. Do I a magic atmosphere inhale? Erewhile, my passion would not brook delay. Now in a pure love dream I melt away. Are we the sport of every passing gale? Should she return and enter now, how wouldst thou rue thy guilty flame? Proud vaunter, thou wouldst hide thy brow, and at her feet sink down with shame. Mephistopheles, quick, quick, below I see her there. Faust away, I will return no more. Mephistopheles here is a casket, with a store of jewels, which I got elsewhere just laid in the press. Make haste. I swear to you, twill turn her brain, there in some trifles I have placed, wherewith another to obtain. But child is child, and play is play. Faust I know not shall I. Mephistopheles do you ask? Perchance you would retain the treasure. Is such your wish, why then, I say, henceforth absolve me from my task, nor longer waste your hours of leisure. I trust you're not by avarice led. I rub my hands, I scratch my head, he places the casket in the press and closes the lock. Now quick. Away. That soon the sweet young creature made the wish, and purpose of your heart obey. You'd stand you theirs would you to the lecture room repair, as if before you stood, arrayed in flesh and blood, physics, and metaphysics weird and grey, away. Excellent. Margaret, with a lamp, here tis so close, so sultry now, she opens the window. Yet out of doors tis not so warm. I feel so strange, I know not how, I wish my mother would come home. To me there runs a shuddering, I'm but a foolish timid thing. While undressing herself she begins to sing. There was a king in Thule, true even to the grave, to whom his dying mistress a golden beaker gave. At every feast he drained it, naught was to him so dear, and often as he drained it, gushed from his eyes the tear. When death came, unrepining his cities are he told, all to his heir resigning, except his cup of gold. With many a knightly vassal at a royal feast sat he, in yon proud hall ancestral, in his castle o'er the sea. Up stood the jovial monarch, and quaffed his last life's glow, then hurled the hallowed goblet into the flood below. He saw it splashing, drinking, and plunging in the sea, his eyes meanwhile were sinking, and never again drank he. She opens the press to put away her clothes, and perceives the casket. How comes this lovely casket here? The press I locked, of that I'm confident. Tis very wonderful. What's in it I can't guess, perhaps was brought by someone in distress, and left in pledge for loan my mother lent. Here by ribbon hangs a little key. I have a mind to open it and see. Heavens. Only look. What have we here? In all my days ne'er saw I such a sight. Jewels. Which any noble dame might wear, for some high pageant richly dight. This chain how would it look on me? These splendid gems, whose may they be? She puts them on and steps before the glass. Were but the ear rings only mine. This one has quite another air. What boosts it to be young and fair? It doubtless may be very fine, 
But then, alas, man cares for you, and praise sounds half like pity too. Build all dot lure, gold dot secure all things. Alas, we poor. Promenade Faust walking thoughtfully up and down. To him Mephistopheles Mephistopheles by all rejected love. By hellish fire I curse, what I knew ought, to make my imprecation worse. Faust what aileth thee? What chafes thee now so sore? A face like that I never saw before. Mephistopheles I'd yield me to the devil instantly, did it not happen that myself am he. Faust there must be some disorder in thy wit. To rave thus like a madman, is it fit? Mephistopheles think. Only think. The gems for Gretchen brought, them hath the priest now made his own. A glimpse of them the mother caught, and gan with secret fear to groan. The woman's scent is keen enough, doth ever in the prayer book snuff, smells every article to ascertain whether the thing is holy or profane, and sent it in the jewels rare, that there was not much blessing there. My child, she cries, ill-gotten good ensnares the soul, consumes the blood. With them we'll deck our lady's shrine, she'll cheer our souls with bread divine. At this poor Gretchen gan to pout, tis a gift horse, at least, she thought, and sure, he godless cannot be, who brought them here so cleverly. Straight for a priest the mother sent, who, when he understood the jest, with what he saw was well content. This shows a pious mind. Quoth he, self-conquest is true victory. The church hath a good stomach, she, with zest, whole countries hath swallowed down, and never yet a surfeit known. The church alone, be it confessed, daughters, can ill got wealth digest. Faustid is a general custom, too. Practiced alike by king and Jew. Mephistopheles with that clasp, chain, and ring, he swept as they were mushrooms, and the casket, without one word of thanks, he kept, as if of nuts, it were a basket. Promised reward in heaven, then forth he hide, and greatly they were edified. Faust and Gretchen. Mephistopheles in unquiet mood knows neither what she would or should, the trinkets night and day thinks or, on him who brought them, dwells still more. Faust the darling's sorrow grieves me, bring another set without delay. The first, methinks, was no great thing. Mephistopheles also my gentleman child's play. Faust plan all things to achieve my end. Engage the attention of her friend. No milk and water devil be, and bring fresh jewels instantly. Mephistopheles a, sir. Most gladly I'll obey. Faust exit. Mephistopheles your doting love sick full, with ease, merely his lady love to please, sun, moon, and stars in sport, would puff away. Exit. The neighbor's house Martha, alone, God pardon my dear husband, he doth not in truth act well by me. Forth in the world abroad to roam, and leave me on the straw at home. And yet his will I ne'er did thwart, God knows, I love it him from my heart. She weeps. Perchance he's dead. O wretched state. Had I but a certificate. Margaret comes, Margaret Dame Martha. Martha Gretchen. Margaret only think. My knees beneath me well nigh sink. Within my press I found today, another case, of ebony. And things, magnificent they are, more costly than the first, by far. Martha you must not name it to your mother. It would to shrift, just like the other. Margaret nay look at them. Now only see. Martha, dresses her up, thou happy creature. Margaret woe is me. Them in the street I cannot wear, or in the church, or anywhere. Martha come often over here to me, the gems put on quite privately, and then before the mirror walk an hour or so, thus we shall have our pleasure too. Then suitable occasions we must seize, as at a feast, to show them by degrees. A chain at first, pearly or drops then, your mother won't see them, or will coin some tale or other. Margaret, but, who, I wonder, could the caskets bring? I fear there's something wrong about the thing. A knock. Good heavens, can that my mother be? Martha, peering through the blind, tis a strange gentleman, I see. Come in. Mephistopheles enters. Mephistopheles I've entered to intrude today. Ladies, excuse the liberty, I pray. He steps back respectfully before Margaret. After Dame Martha Schwartley I inquire. Martha tis I pray what have you to say to me? Mephistopheles, aside to her, I know you now and therefore will retire, at present you've distinguished company. Pardon the freedom, madam, with your leave, I will make free to call again at eve. Martha, aloud, why, child, of all strange notions, he for some grand lady taketh thee. Margaret I am, in truth, of humble blood, the gentleman is far too good, nor gems nor trinkets are my own. Mephistopheles oh tis not the mere ornaments alone, her glance and mien far more betray. Rejoice I am that I may stay. Martha your business, sir. I long to know, Mephistopheles, what I could happier tidings show. I trust my ne'er and you'll not let me rue. Your husband's dead, and greeteth you. Martha is dead. True heart. Oh, misery. My husband dead. Oh, I shall die. Margaret, alas. Good Martha. Don't despair. Mephistopheles now listen to the sad affair. Margaret, I for this cause should fear to love. The loss my certain death would prove. Mephistopheles' joy still must sorrow, sorrow joy attend. Martha proceed, and tell the story of his end. Mephistopheles of Padua, in St. Anthony's, in holy ground his body lies, quiet and cool his place of rest, with pious ceremonials blessed. Martha and had you not besides to bring. Mephistopheles oh yes. 
one grave and solemn prayer, let them for him three hundred masses sing. But in my pockets, I have nothing there. Martha no trinket, no love token did he send. What every journeyman safe in his pouch will hoard there for remembrance fondly stored, and rather hungers, rather begs than spend. Mephistopheles, madam, in truth, it grieves me sore, but he his gold not lavishly hath spent. His failings too he deeply did repent, ay, and his evil plight bewail it still more. Margaret, alas, that man should thus be doomed to woe. I for his soul will many a requiem pray. Mephistopheles, a husband, you deserve this very day, a child so worthy to be loved. Margaret, ah no, that time hath not yet come for me. Mephistopheles, if not a spouse, a gallant let it be. Among heaven's choicest gifts, I place, so sweet a darling to embrace. Margaret, our land doth no such usage, no. Mephistopheles, usage or not, it happens so. Martha, go on, I pray. Mephistopheles, I stood by his bedside. Something less foul it was than dung, twas straw half rotten, yet, he is a Christian died. And sorely hath remorse his conscience wrung. Wretch that I was, quoth he, with parting breath, so to forsake my business and my wife. Ah, the remembrance is my death, could I but have her pardon in this life. Martha, weeping, dear soul, I've long forgiven him, indeed. Mephistopheles, though she, God knows, was more to blame than I. Martha, he lied. What, on the brink of death to lie. Mephistopheles, if I am skill of the countenance to read, he doubtless fabled as he parted hence. No time had I to gape, or take my ease, he said, first to get children, and then get them bread, and bread too, in the very widest sense, nor could I eat in peace even my proper share. Martha, what, all my truth, my love forgotten quite, my weary drudgery by day and night. Mephistopheles, not so. He thought of you with tender care. Quoth he, heaven knows how fervently I prayed, for wife and children when from Malta bound the prayer hath heaven with favor crowned. We took a Turkish vessel which conveyed rich store of treasure for the sultan's court, its own reward our gallant action brought. The captured prize was shared among the crew, and of the treasure I received my due. Martha how? Where? The treasure hath he buried, pray. Mephistopheles where the four winds have blown it, who can say? In Naples as he strolled, it, a stranger there comely maid took pity on my friend, and gave such tokens of her love and care, that he retained them to his blessed end. Martha scoundrel, to rob his children of their bread. And all this misery, this bitter need, could not his course of recklessness impede. Mephistopheles, well, he hath paid the forfeit, and is dead. Now were I in your place, my counsel here, my weeds I'd wear for one chaste ear, and for another lover meanwhile would look out. Martha lass, I might search far and near, not quickly should I find another like my first, there could not be a fonder fool than mine, only he loved too well abroad to Rome, loved foreign women too, and foreign wine, and loved besides the dice sackers it. Mephistopheles all had gone swimmingly, no doubt, had he, but given you at home, on his side, just as white a range. Upon such terms, to you I swear, myself with you would gladly rings exchange. Martha the gentleman is surely pleased to jest. Mephistopheles, aside, now to be off in time, were best. She'd make the very devil marry her. To Margaret. How fares it with your heart? Margaret, how mean you, sir? Mephistopheles, aside, the sweet young innocent. Aloud, ladies, farewell. Margaret, farewell. Martha, but ere you leave us, quickly tell. I from a witness fain had heard, where, how, and when my husband died and was interred. To forms I've always been attached indeed, his death I fain would in the journals read. Mephistopheles, eh, madam, what two witnesses declare is held as valid everywhere. A gallant friend I have, not far from here, who will for you before the judge appear. I'll bring him straight. Martha, I pray you do. Mephistopheles and this young lady, we shall find her too. A noble youth, far travelled, he shows to the sex all courtesy. Margaret I in his presence needs must blush for shame. Mephistopheles not in the presence of a crowned king. Martha the garden, then, behind my house, will name, they will await you both this evening.